The stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland, where scientists tested hundreds of chemical and biological substances on at least 7,800 servicemen. So could this really be happening? Well, joining me to help discuss this is attorney Gordon Erspalmer from San Francisco, California. So, Mr. Erspalmer, you represent these veterans who have filed the lawsuit. What kinds of things have they told you about what happened to them? Well, there, there are a variety of different uh, circumstances they found themselves in. But w one man, for example, was given a very potent hallucinogenic drug in a very high dose and left, left by himself. And he saw bugs under his fingernails, and he ended up taking a razor blade out of his mess kit and tearing out his fingernails uh, under the influence of this psychotic drug. Uh, you mentioned the, my, the brain implants. So one of the plaintiffs has a brain implant that was pushed up his nose uh, to the edge of his uh, frontal lobe, uh, and it is right on the periphery of his sinus cavity, and we believe it is a radio transmitter uh, that enabled the government to remotely control his behavior. Uh, there are lots of other similar stories, but uh, they tested uh, hundreds and hundreds of different biological substances, such as anthrax, uh, and chemical substances such as nerve gas, uh, uh, psychochemicals, a whole variety of psychochemicals. And they did this all in total secrecy for a period of over 20 years. And as far as I understand, your clients can't get any monetary compensation from the CIA. So what exactly are you guys hoping for then? And explain to me a little bit why they can't get that monetary compensation. Okay. Well, veterans are in a peculiar class in this country. Uh, everyone uh, else can sue under the Federal Torts Claims Act if the government does something bad to them, uh, except veterans. And this is called the Ferris Doctrine because of U.S. Supreme Court in 1950 uh, decided that veterans were somehow excluded from being able to sue under the Federal Torts Claims Act. And so veteran cannot seek damages against the government. All the cases get thrown out. And part of the purpose of our case is, is to try to challenge that doctrine because it, it was not legislative. It was a, created by the U.S. Supreme Court uh, during the middle of the, of the Cold War. What we do seek in the case, in addition to challenging the Ferris Doctrine, is there are Army regulations that require medical care to be provided for all casualties uh, of the program, of the, of the human experimentation program, uh, and, and also that require notice to each of the involved in individuals as to what substance they got, because they don't know. What, what, what was the dose they got, how concentrated, and what are the known health effects. So we are asking for all relief in all those areas. Uh, notification of every veteran or if, if deceased, uh, his next of kin, uh, provide health care to them free of charge for the conditions associated with their exposure, uh, and also to be released from the secrecy oaths that were exacted from them. They, they cannot talk about their experience. Uh, they were all sworn to, to secrecy and gave secrecy oaths, with the, which the government is still trying to enforce right. you know, 30, 40 years later. Yeah, and you know, speaking of that secrecy, how tough has it been to go up against the CIA? I'm guessing they probably don't want to talk too much about this. Well, the discovery in the first year and a half of the case has been almost impossible against the CIA. Uh, they have not participated in discovery. Uh, the the, the uh, magistrate judge just ordered them finally to respond to our document request, but it has been a total lack of cooperation from the CIA. And frankly, uh, the rest of the defendants are not much better. Uh, the Army and the uh, Department of Defense have been resisting discovery at every uh, uh, moment as well. So it's been a very difficult case. Uh, they're claiming uh, executive privilege and, and uh, top secret classification and just about every other imaginable objection to discovery. And you know, I interviewed someone in one of our earlier shows who said they believe programs like this still exist today. What do you think? Do you think it's more commonplace than people would think? I, I personally believe that the program exists today, but with the different forms of consent. 
Uh, the, the issues of consent and, uh, are also part of our case. I should have mentioned that, but in, informed consent. But they, they did these tests without telling anyone what they were getting, what the health effects were, and then they just discharged them and never followed up. Uh, so the, today, I think the program does go on today. Uh, there are, uh, I hear about uh, VA, uh, veterans from do VA domiciliaries, uh, rest homes being used. I, there's, there's, there's a lot of research that's being conducted, but probably under uh, conditions where they sign the right form at least. Uh, to consent to being experimented upon. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, some people who hear about this case might say, hey, these guys volunteered for experiments, right? Uh, they should have known that, you know, what they were doing. Well, there's a, there's a lot of problems with the consent. Uh, they, they were told uh, that what they'd be testing was uh, new kinds of gas masks and protective clothing for soldiers for a chemical warfare or biological warfare. And once they got to the Edgewood Arsenal or, or, or one of a number of other sites, they kind of did a bait and switch on them. And suddenly they found themselves in gas chambers where, where they were using uh, tear gas or, or mustard gas or, or, or VV gas, the so-called V gas, which is a nerve gas. And the consents that they signed did not identify what they were going to be exposed to. They just said, uh, I agree to participate in this program. Yeah. Uh, and they used all kinds of uh, 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 things that lured them into it by telling them, oh, you only have to work four days a week and right. there's no KP duty and so on and so forth. And, and so they actually were recruited under false pretenses and yeah. none of them knew what they were getting into. It's really, really shocking stuff. And of course, we're going to continue to follow this case. That was attorney Gordon Erspalmer from San Francisco, California. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.